Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about increasing and decreasing functions as well as the first derivative test. First we're going to define what we mean by an increasing or decreasing function, right? This is something that we can figure out from a picture pretty easily, right? This is increasing, this is always decreasing, uh, but what is the rigorous definition here? So if we look at, you know, say two points A and B on both of these, so what it means here is if B is greater than A, then F of B is going to be greater than F of A. And over here we have the opposite, right? So if we go to the right, so if B is greater than A, then F of B is less than F of A. So here we'll just collect this officially. So if f is defined on an interval i, then it's increasing if for every uh, pair of numbers where b is greater than a, f of b is greater than f of a. So again, move right, we move up, and then it's decreasing if we move right and move down. So now we're going to examine uh, the connection between the derivative and whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So on the left here, right, we're clearly increasing and if you notice, right, like all my tangent lines at these points uh, have positive slope, right? And the opposite is happening over here with my decreasing function. I have negative slope for all my tangent lines. And so you might think like f prime greater than zero kind of corresponds to increasing and f prime less than zero sort of corresponds to decreasing. And this is roughly right. Uh, it doesn't quite go both ways. And I'll talk about that in a second. But here is a theorem. Okay, so we have f is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. That should look familiar, and we'll talk about why we want those in a second, but you may be thinking mean value theorem is at play here somewhere, and you would be right. Uh, so basically we have three conditions here that we're considering. So first, if the derivative is always positive for every point in that open interval, then f is going to be an increasing function on that interval. If f prime is less than zero, uh, so it's negative, then f is decreasing. And if it is zero, so that's a picture I did not draw up here, right? So if we just have a uh, derivative zero everywhere, horizontal tangent line, then f is a constant function. And this is something we've also kind of talked about before. So note that I didn't show that it goes both ways here. So uh, a reason why this isn't exactly true that increasing, I will say, does not imply, for instance, that f prime is greater than zero everywhere. Uh, we have a counterexample to this. Think of f of x equals x cubed. So x cubed is pretty clearly increasing everywhere, but f prime of zero is zero. So it's increasing everywhere, but it's not always a positive derivative because we have this point here with the horizontal tangent line. So why does this work? It turns out it's actually the mean value theorem at work uh, behind the scenes here. So let's talk about how it applies. So obviously the hypotheses were satisfied in our theorem. It's continuous on the closed interval. It's differentiable on the open interval. So let's think about how the conclusion actually helps us. So now we'll assume, uh, we'll only look at one case, the other case is similar. We'll assume that the derivative is always positive on our interval, open interval from A to B. And so if we take any two points in this interval, right, so I have x1 and x2 down here, uh, it could be as, x1 could be a or anything in between, and x2 could be as far right as b, but the key is x2 is to the right of x1. Then the mean value theorem says, well, there's some c in this open interval between x1 and x2 such that f prime of c is the slope of this secant line I have drawn in red, right? So my c would probably be somewhere along here where you see this uh, slope looks parallel there. So what does this mean? Well, this is exactly the slope of my secant line and my f prime of c I know is positive by my assumption, right? And so if this is greater than zero, x2 is to the right of x1, so this is greater than zero. And so, well, if I have a positive number is something divided by a positive number, this means my top must be greater than zero. And if f of x2 minus f of x1 is greater than zero, this means that f of x2 is greater than f of x1. Namely, that if we went right, we had to go up. So this is how the mean value theorem tells you uh, that this must be the case. 
and it'd be very similar if we had f prime less than zero, right? You'd have negative number is something over a positive number, so the numerator would have to be less than zero in that case. So now we're gonna lead into the first derivative test, which is basically how we find relative extrema, right? So the extreme value theorem told us about absolute maxes and mins. This will tell us how to find relative maxes or mins. Uh, and first, we're going to look at how we can tell whether f is increasing or decreasing on an interval. So it's a few step process. So the first thing you wanna do is find your critical values. Okay, so that's where, again, f prime is either zero or does not exist right? Um, and maybe I'll even be more specific here. I'll just go ahead and call these C. And then if we are on an interval I, then we're going to divide I into sub intervals. So we'll do that using critical values. Uh, this will make more sense probably when I go through an example here in a second. And the last step here is you would just pick any point in this sub interval and find the derivative at that point. If the derivative is greater than zero, then f is increasing on that entire subinterval where you pick the point from. And if it's less than zero, then f is decreasing on that entire subinterval you are on. So let's do an example and actually put this into practice. All right, so here's the function we care about. So again, the first thing we wanna do is find our critical values. So we find our derivative and we wanna set that equal to zero. We would also want to check and see if it doesn't exist somewhere here, but in this case it's a polynomial, so that's not going to be the case. So here we get x squared plus x minus 12. We set that equal to zero. So then we're going to want to factor, right? And so this is going to be x plus 4 times x minus 3. And so our critical values are negative 4 and 3. So what I meant by the next part is divide like the real line into subintervals. So you make you can make basically a little sign chart here. So we've got our critical values at negative four and three, and then we just pick something. So, you know, negative five is a reasonable value. So we would check f prime of negative five to talk about the whole left side here. And so f prime of negative five is 25 minus five uh, minus 12, which is positive. So I just put like a plus up there f prime of, well, zero is always easy to plug in, right, for something between negative four and three. And so we plug in zero, we get negative 12, which is less than zero. And something to the right, I'll just choose four. And this would give us 16 plus four minus 12, which is eight, that's positive. So I get a plus here. So what do I conclude? Well, I know then that f is increasing where the derivative is positive, so from negative infinity to negative four, and again from three to infinity, and it's decreasing in the middle from negative four to three. So here's the first derivative test. So this is a theorem. Uh, I will often call it the FDT for short. So we want f to be differentiable on an interval and c to be a critical number in that interval. So we have like three cases here, and this is kind of coming from what we just did, so think of that sign chart. If f prime switches from positive to negative, well, what does that really mean? That means we're going from increasing, we hit this point, and then we start decreasing. So this is a relative max here at f of c. The opposite would be if we switch signs from negative to positive, so we went decreasing, we hit this point, and then we go to increasing, and so here it's a relative min. In the last case, this is something like that graph of x cubed. So here, right, at this point in the middle where it kind of flattens out very briefly, we don't see a switch in sign, right, because over here we're positive, over here we're positive, we're definitely increasing before and after, and we have positive slopes of tangent lines. And so in that case, it's neither a relative max nor a relative min. And of course, this is just a statement about relative because we only know around that point, right? We don't know what's happening elsewhere. So this is all we can conclude. So now let's go back to the previous example we had, right? So we had our sign chart here coming from the derivative, which we found had critical numbers um, at negative four and three, and we had a plus minus plus. And so what can we conclude from the first derivative test well, this tells you that here at x equals negative four, 
we're going to have a relative maximum, right? Because we're seeing plus to minus. So we were increasing and then decreasing afterwards. And then here we are decreasing and then increasing afterwards. And so this is a relative min, right? We're going from minus to plus. So note that this is just the x coordinate of the relative max and relative min. These are not the actual values, right? You would have to plug back into f to get those. Uh, but I don't really feel like it, I guess. So here I just located where the relative max and relative min would be. All right, and so for your exercise, I want you to consider this cubic function. And so your first uh, job is to find the intervals on which f is increasing or decreasing. And then you're going to want to classify the critical numbers as the x-coordinate or location of either relative max, relative min, or neither. All right, thank you for watching.